I'm an artist here, a public artist here in Charlottesville. And some people might ask, what's a public artist? Well, a public artist is somebody who does landscapes, mountains specifically, uh, buildings, dwellings. Uh, there is a different mountain, so to speak, in everybody's neighborhood. Uh, and most people who live in front of a mountain or near a mountain actually know the shape of that mountain. Um, it's very specific to a family or who they are is a lot of times the character of the mountain which as you can see here in the foreground from my painting which I'm about to uh, show you is has a particular shape and it has a particular shading and it has a particular color today. The colors are always harmonious. If the sun is directly overhead, you're going to have a continuity of light. And the continuity of light has to do with the color, which in this case is sort of an off greenish, got a, well, if you're a painter, or if you paint it, you're going to mix the colors the way you see it. It's not just a blue sky, it's not just a green mountain. It has a lot of color and content and the content or the character of the mountains all my life I've been looking at say a lot about who we are as people so if we chop off the mountain top and put a prison up there <laughs> well yeah it's not very glorious and it doesn't function to keep the water to keep the air pure and to keep what trees do which is to purify our lives. Uh, so we need to maintain mountains. And people who live near mountains know that. As soon as somebody takes it off for a ski slope or whatever, coal mining or whatever, it becomes nothing but a non-functioning space. And um, it doesn't, it takes away from the environment drastically. We don't have our organisms, we don't have our bugs that keep everything going, we don't have our animals that keep everything going and alive. And specifically, it's hot. Of course, what do trees do? They cool us off. And here we have a, a landscape that I did in Canada, Quebec, Canada. And as you can see, the colors, it's probably August. And I say that because the things are high. The uh, plants, the native plants, the vegetation, is drastically different than a lot of places that we might see in Virginia. And that the flowers and things that grow there, the wild uh, botanical uh, environment is very specific to where you are. Like if you're in a desert, you'll have one kind of plant life that grow. And if you're in the highest peaks of Alaska or whatever, et cetera, et cetera, or if you're in Asia, or if you're in Africa. Every plant life grows according to the environment. And hopefully, when you're in your neighborhood and you can see as you take a hike, you can see what your environment is like. So I'm gonna um, try to do this mountain today uh, that I see here in Nellysford. Nellysford is a beautiful, beautiful mountainous area. Um, and there are people who are uh, stewards and they try to maintain their uh, mountainous area uh, for the benefit of not only nature, meaning animal life and, and, and as you know, plant life depends on each other. What, what plant life gets cut away may be feeding another plant life, whether it's shading it or it's introducing certain insects to the environment. 
and that those insects help repel or help pollinate another plant. So we think that if we cut everything down sometimes, oh, it's clean. Well, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's exactly what we're doing. We're sterilizing an environment by cutting it all down and putting up a parking lot, as Joni Mitchell once sang. You know, you put up a parking lot and you take away life. And life is very dependent. We're dependent on life and life is dependent that we don't mess it up. So uh, today I'm gonna try to capture the shape of this mountain and uh, I just need to get my colors out. Um, I like to use water-based colors if I use my magic marker. I mean, uh, if I use my motorcycle. But today I'm just sort of going to be here and uh, I didn't really have anything so I always carry something in my car and that's what artists like to do they like to be very portable and uh, try to um, try to um, you know bring out and um, some kind of uh, you know colors and be oh hey Robin hey how are you I'm fantastic oh how my are God. you so you are Travis book and Travis is just like here <laughs> And I was just surprised, surprised Travis, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been out here, just like you are talking about, I've been out here editing the forest, you know, <gasps> uh, encouraging some plants, discouraging others. <gasps> so, but what are you doing in, we're here, over here, in Devil's Backbone, and what are you doing? We're in the beautiful Rockfish Valley, and uh, we're getting ready for, for, some, uh, for some events that we have here in, well, at, at Devil's Backbone. But what do you do? What do I do? Yeah. Uh, a variety of things. I'm a musician. It's one thing that I do. Um, and I help organize music festivals. Well, can I do your and I run a weed eater. Oh my God. Come over here. Let me, let's talk about this. If you don't mind. No, by all means. Oh my God. Make me look pretty. Okay. No, no problem. So, <laughs> yeah. But I like to do caricatures. Um, and sometimes that, you know, it gives us your nuances and stuff. So I hope you don't mind. I have at it. Have at it. All right. So, okay. So now, all right. I know about you. You're famous. Now, what do you, you guys as a band, you go across the country. What do you do? You go to Colorado. What do you do? What is, you are fantastic. You're so humble. You're coming out here. Oh, I'm just looking at the weeds. No. What do you do? Tell us all about you. Well, I'm in a band uh, with a bunch of other guys. We're called the Infamous String Dusters. And uh, like you said, we basically travel all over the country and uh, put on put on shows, create experiences. And and here at Devil's Backbone, we found a perfect place in this beautiful valley to put on a, a, a music festival, uh, which is sort of the culmination of all of our experiences. But even as we travel around the country, every night is is its own unique um, experience, an opportunity for people to be in the present and to share, you know, share in the company of other music lovers and. And uh, it's a really, it's a really rewarding form of work. We we make people make a lot of people happy by just you know driving around and playing music. Now you're humbly telling us it in a nutshell, but for real, a musician's life is like a painter's life in a way. Is that every time you are playing, you are you are harmonizing and you are thinking about certain notes and things that happen each time and not it's not every time uh wasn't it Joni Mitchell also I'm sorry she said you know a great one to quote yeah well she said you know it's that um she doesn't really feel like she wants the the idea of her writing music and the idea of her playing music is so that she can incorporate it in within the where she is Mm -hmm. As opposed to like making an album and just cookie cutting it each time. It's not about that. It's about actually, is that true? It's about playing the music. It's about... Yeah. Well, music music is sort of a, a great metaphor for life. And you're, you're trying to seek harmony with, with uh, not only with the experiences that you're having, but with the individuals that you're making the music with. And, um, you know, I find that that, that that is really true of, of, of life as you, you know, even if you're at the grocery store, you're, you're trying to, you know, find a flow with the people that are there. And uh, so, so, you know, a pers pursuit of harmony in music uh, has really extended to every sort of every part of my life. And, and that's even sort of what we do out here on the, on the grounds as we try to, you know, get everything living in harmony, find a place for the bees and a place for the goats and, 
and then a place for the people also to come and, and have a good time and listen to music and feel you know so you like, feel good in, in my mind is that you're you're such a professional is that it means that you do make money on your art or whatever a professional does <laughs> to make money but you a bit. but yeah and in doing that if for you to be as good as uh, a uh, you know professional means to also be able to present a certain image or a certain musicality or whatever in in a content so that people can be entertained but also that they understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. where I know there are improv air times you can just go off and just maybe play music uh, that your you know drummer or somebody just starts to be able to do some kind of flow or whatever but for the most part you've had to do this all your life basically listening and and that's how you why you're a professional right now as a young age right yeah I mean uh, you know music music for me is really uh, it's it's uh, it's very dynamic and it's 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 changing all the time and it's not uh, some of it is sort of premeditated but um, you know, fortunately, our 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 band and myself in particular has been able to make a career out of being uh, being myself and being sort of staying true to my own experience. Just like uh, I imagine a painter probably paints their best when they're when they're not trying to be like anything in particular, trying not trying to paint like any style in particular. With music and and with life, um, I find that that sort of the truer I am to to my own experience and to what's sort of going on in my own center, uh, the the better that the art is, the better that the music is, and the more the more easily uh, the audience can relate to what we're doing. Um, but it's... you're you're okay. I'm sorry. Now I'm I'm doing this caricature, and I got to the point where I need some nuances on your. Uh... Okay, so now you are you a, a guitarist? you what do you play? I play some guitar. I play upright bass in the string dusters. Oh. The big dog house bass. Oh, okay. And I also sing and write songs and do okay. a variety of other things. Handle long, business parts of it. It's a long, business. Yes, it have to be. I yeah. mean, everybody has to eat. Everybody has to pay the mortgage. You know, you got to eat and you got to eat good food. And sometimes you got to go out of your way to find good food. You got to make some money. Right. Now, um, my friend Jen, uh, she plays for the Young Divorcees. You know them? I do. <laughs> She's my friend. Great and she, name. Yeah. So um, anyway, she um, introduced me actually to sort of bluegrass sort of country in using those type of instruments. She plays upright bass also. And I was, I never knew that, you know, I'm sort of a classical, I mean, I just didn't, you know, it's that, it seems like in this day and age, people are using uh, traditional instruments, or what I would call, because I'm old, traditional instruments. For you, it's just another instrument, but that you're you're listening to sounds and stuff that are interesting to you, that are kind of different, I guess, than what's been happening like in the last 10 years or whatever. Is that is that true? Is that how you sort of come up with your like what you want to do in terms of when you get together? How do you practice? How do you come up with your song? That's that's the point. Well, something that's something that's so appealing about. Um about bluegrass and roots and folk and mountain music to me is that it it does have this uh, it has a long-standing tradition and a long history and it also is made um, it's made with instruments that are just that are merely you know wood and steel and uh, electronics aren't necessarily needed and necessary it's it's a it's sort of it's almost an it's almost an ancient art form folk music um, now, you know, being being in a band, you're constantly progressing and constantly integrating all the things that you're learning. And so, you know, we use a lot of electronics and there's a lot of power and a lot of volume, um, things that weren't possible 100 years ago. But uh, ultimately, we can just get the instruments out and the, the five of us can stand around and can play this music anywhere. And and um, and it's it's very real. It's 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 got a great it's got a great history and and it's a really beautiful beautiful music art form a folk a folk art really past you know the songs and the and the stories are passed down from from generation to generation. Do you find like you know I I read stories about Beethoven and I need to compare you with Beethoven because I think you're a genius to be able to come up with a whole album, a whole uh, concert. You have to be absolutely intelligent, you know, and um, 
and that means using your brain it's, it's to the total fullest and uh, you can't just uh, you know say okay today I'm gonna walk up uh, wake up and here it no it's that you are thinking all the time about melody you're thinking all the time about you know little sounds or things that you hear right now so what's your inspiration like how do you like what for instance one of your songs do you remember how it what was it something specific that you heard or like you were walking around and then all of a sudden you went oh did that ever happen because because you're always l l thinking about music well inspiration comes from from everywhere like you said it comes from it comes from the sounds you know i hear in nature and it comes from the the way that the that the light shines in the morning when you get up out here in the mountains at 7 a.m it's a it's a it's it's uh you know it's beautiful the world is beautiful and moving and interesting and so it's coming from everywhere and there are those aha moments where things sort of um, solidify and come together into a concept um, but you know inspiration inspiration comes from from everywhere and I think the, the the hardest part about being an artist is being is being open to it and prepared for it when it when it does arrive because it can be um, it can be it can be difficult to sort of create the muse where the muse does not exist but practice 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 but right? if you if you if you if you if you stay in the present and you 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 remain open to what's going on around you then you know that the, then that then the ideas I, the ideas will come so like for somebody a novice like me in terms of um actually playing an instrument or whatever i might pick one up and then i say oh <laughs> well, this is fun but then if I really want to control what I'm thinking, I would have to do it all the time. I would have to, you know what I mean? Is that true? I mean, how you became such a professional, did you have to do it all the time? I've played a lot of music, to answer your question. I've played a lot of music, and I think everyone's path is a little different. But just like anything that you're passionate about, if you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about it, if you, uh, if you go to bed at night and it's on your mind, um, you know the th the things that you're passionate about tend to be the things that you're best suited towards. So you know if you're if you if you think about chickens all the time, you should probably be growing eggs and butchering chickens. And and you know that's what that's what leads me to to you know run the goats out here and cut down trees in my spare time. Is I I oh. I really love to be in the in the woods as well. That's oh. something that inspires me. Oh, so right. what's your favorite color, by the way? Probably blue. Blue. Good. Maybe brown, okay. but brown's not really much of a color. <laughs> Actu brown's sort of like all the colors together, right? The variations of <laughs> absolutely correct, absolutely. Um, how do you spell your first name? Wait a minute. Excuse me. Okay. First name is spelled T R A V I S. All right. Okay. And um, okay. So what I'd like to know some more about because you're so. You're so nice to be able to come here today, and um, one of the things that you're doing and why we're here today uh, is you're contributing to the free clinic. Yes. And um, it's not like you're rich and wealthy, like, you know, I don't want to say any names, Donald Trump, but anyway, you know, you still understand the sustainability of a community depends on people giving to organizations that provide services that everybody can use. So, you know, if people have some money and you're so generous today, uh, you're gonna try to contribute some money from hopefully your proceeds <laughs> at this concert. Now, what is this concert all about? Like, wh how long is it gonna be and all that stuff? The Festi experience happens in October every year, Columbus Day weekend, it's three days of music. Oh. Uh, craft beer, local food, oh. and we've also got uh, running races and mountain bike races and a lot of outdoor oh activities, goodness. disc golf. Um, it happens every year, Columbus Day weekend. Three oh. nights, you can camp. Um, it's just a great time, a family, family festival. There's specifically family family areas and family camping and, and a good, safe place to drink some beer and eat some great food and listen to some good music. So what time does it start and all up? I think it starts on Friday afternoon about four and ends up Sunday night sometime. Uh -huh. And we've got a bunch of great national acts and some regional acts. We always want to try to support the regional musicians as well. Um, Steel Wheels are coming from over in Harrisonburg and a bunch of other great bands. So How long have you been doing this? This will be our third year. 
How long have you been doing outdoor concerts or not? Or entertaining, I should say. Oh, uh, personally. 10 years, maybe 12 years. Wow. I've been entertaining my parents since I was born. Yeah. Uh, well, you were just born like not long ago, so that's amazing. It's only been, only been a few years. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> so, um, so what we're doing here today not only is providing um, sort of information about uh, the concert, but also the idea that is a musician, I think as an artist, most people are probably more attuned or more astute about the needs of everyday people as opposed to some people that are sort of like, I guess the 1% <laughs> or the people that are actually, um, you know, sort of sheltered from some of the problems of, you know, having to get employment by doing things that you enjoy doing, mm -hmm. um, but that we enjoy doing. You know, one of my pet peeves here uh, is that in life, or particularly I think in the United States, because in Canada when I paint, people pay for my work. And they appreciate that I need to eat. They appreciate the fact that I need to pay my mortgage. And they appreciate it so much that they want me to do more. So of course they have to support me. But here in the United States, there's an idea that we're kind of like, I don't know what, what we're supposed to do in order to be able to create what we do. But we need to work at our craft, is what you're telling us today, is that you're able to do all this genius work because every day you have to, you have to create, you have to think, and you have to be in your um, profession. It's not, it's not easy and it's work and it takes uh, a lot of effort and because of that um, we have to support you you know as a community as a professional doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief or whoever get supported you know that they get supported because people actually know that they have to feed their children mm -hmm. and that we enjoy what they do as a professional but not so much as enjoyment is that um, we need you. So, um, I'm so I'm I'm very grateful, but I'm also here today to um, thank you for sort of uh, understanding that and to dedicating yourself to our lives and making our lives uh, more poignant. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, and. One of the things I wanted to know a little bit more about also is your, the, uh, how you get together and how do you create, do you have like a recording studio? Like, what do you do? What do we do? We, we make up music and we get together and we arrange it and then we play it for people to put it really simply. Um, we, we make, we make recordings and, and, and put on events and, and because we all live in different places, it demands that we, we get together from time to time and, and uh, you know, spend specific time working on the music, but uh, for the most part, it happens very organically. Us just getting together, and in the course of playing shows and and doing what we do, we love to play music. So when we get together, we spend most of our time playing, and and the the sort of the repertoire happens from there. And you know, it's all it's all part of a it's all part of sort of a. But do you have a do you have like a facility? No. Oh. So how do we get the how do we get the CD how do we get the music? <laughs> you can get it on you can get it anywhere online Amazon or you know how iTunes. How did you get there? We make it. Yeah. We were we recorded in a recording studio. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. We when when we make records we record it in a studio, and then um, have them printed up. And so now a recording studio typically, um, for instance, um, you'll make you'll have an idea. And they'll give you like a certain amount of rental fee or whatever it's called, where you sit in there and you have to pay for the privilege of them putting it together uh, for you to have uh, a piece, so to speak. Right. They're running a business just like just like we are. They got to eat too. So we'll we'll rent the facility and hire an engineer to engineer, and uh, we record and mix and edit and then pay somebody to help us reproduce the CDs, and then we also have partners that help us market and distribute the music and then we also take it out with us when we go on the road and and make it available so and life is, for you is not free i mean it's that we need to pay for all those things so that you can keep 
creating your wonderful pieces. Yeah, I mean, I I always kind of figure as long as as long you know the the art's value is sort of intrinsic, and if the va if the art if the art and if the experience is valuable, then we will be compensated and we'll be able to continue to do it. And if if it's not valuable to people, if people don't want it, then we'll stop making it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's no. it's really that simple. No. Um, and that's and that no. sort of illustrates your point that we you know you, you artists need artists need no. artists need uh, artists needs to, artists need to eat as well, and uh. they need to you know it, it costs a lot of money to get in the in the bus and travel around the country, but. Um, it costs money for you to have overhead to be able to eat everything. But, but it's not a charity. No, so no. as long as the, as long as the music is good and the art is good, I feel like we'll we'll be provided for. And it'll be and it'll Well, all work I out. hope my art is good over here, but I know it's valuable because I put my sticker on it. All right. <laughs> and here you are. Oh my are. gosh. That's kind of like my random Brilliant. interview today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with crayons, you know, so you, you know. <laughs> but, thank you no, so thank much. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate I need to it. Give you a hug. Absolutely. For being the best in the worldy. Thanks for thanks for, for doing what you do. And giving Nellie's Ford in Charlottesville and Colorado and everywhere else you go uh, art. And thank you so much. We're glad to call this place home. <laughs>